it's Grace, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really well. Today I'm coming at you with my February wrap up part two. I have 10 books to talk about, so let's get straight into it. The first book that I want to talk about is Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado. So this is a short story collection, which I picked up because I absolutely loved Carmen Maria Machado's memoir in the dream house. It was one of my favorite books of last year. I thought because I love her writing, because this is a really popular collection, let's give it a go. And I did enjoy this book. I didn't absolutely fall in love with it. I ended up giving it a three star. I mean, I think with short story collections, it's often difficult to find a collection that is five stars because there's always going to be some stories that you prefer. And that was definitely my experience with this book. There were some stories that I absolutely loved and then a few that just really didn't work for me. So most of the stories in this collection are in some way kind of magical horror, um, speculative. It says on the back, it's like a genre bending collection, which I would definitely agree with. Almost all of the stories have some element of like unreality in them. And I think that really works for Carmen Maria Machado's writing style. I think having that element of like horror or unreality intersects really well with the topics that she's often writing about. So in this book, a lot about violence against women. And I think that was one of the things that I loved um, in her memoir was the way that she was writing about an abusive relationship and she was using kind of elements of like horror to talk about that experience. So I do think that's something that Machado does really well, but I just think for me, speculative short stories aren't the ones that I like. I have discovered I prefer a lot more kind of mundane, daily life short stories. And I think definitely in here, the ones that I preferred were the more realistic ones. I did like the opening story, which is called The Husband Stitch, which is a very fairy tale-esque story and I really like the atmosphere of that I like taking that form and trying to do something different with it so my favorite two were um the resident and difficult at party so the resident is potentially a little bit unreal um it's about a writer who goes away to a residency and she's kind of in a very isolated environment with a lot of other artists and weird things kind of start happening but it felt a lot more like uncanny and kind of like realistic horror psychological horror rather than like actively like magical or speculative which is maybe why it worked for me and I just really like the claustrophobic tone of that really enjoyed that one and then I thought difficult at parties was brilliant that was very much about a woman who's I guess in the aftermath of being assaulted and I think it was in those two stories that I recognized the writing that I loved so much in the memoir um that felt the most similar to me ones that are a bit more like magical dystopian or like um apocalyptic magical not really for me. I think it was interesting to read this though, having read her memoir, because I think there's definitely threads of topics that come up in this, which was published first, that she then kind of explores more in the memoir, particularly around like abusive relationship and female agency and queerness. So yeah, I'm glad I read it. It just wasn't quite perfect for me. I also read We Are Never Meeting in Real Life by Samantha Irby, which is one of her personal essay collections. So in January, I read Wow No Thank You, which is her latest one. I'm kind of working like backwards for some reason. We Are Meeting in Real Life is the one before that. And then there's Meaty, which is the first one. And I just love Samantha Irby. I find these essay collections so I listen to them on audio and I just find them so nice to listen to because she's such an interesting writer. She's really funny. She reads her own stories. So it has a very like conversational, colloquial tone. I maybe preferred it to Wow No Thank You actually. It was definitely more personal, I would say. And I think I've heard that Meaty, the first one, is even more so than that and kind of quite difficult because she has had some bad things happen to her in her life. And we definitely get parts of that in this collection. She talks a lot more about her family life. So her mother, was very ill and had to be kind of like cared for by Samantha and then in assisted care. Her father was an alcoholic who kind of had a gambling problem. So things that were kind of just like mentioned in passing in Wano, wow, thank you. You get a little bit more context of in this one. Obviously most people don't read them backwards, but same for her relationship with her wife. She's just kind of called like my lady, I think in the Wano, wow, thank you. But in this one, we get a little bit more about like the start of their relationship. Yeah, I think Wano, wow, thank you was good because she was just picking kind of observational things about life, which she writes really well, but also she's a really fascinating person. So I liked getting to know a bit more about her and she is just so funny. Like I really do laugh out loud. And I think she has a lot of very kind of sharp insight about um, a lot of things. So yeah, I just really love this. Can't recommend Samantha Irby's collections anymore. I also read If I Had Your Face by Frances Char. So this is a novel about a group of young women living in South Korea in Seoul. They all live in this same like apartment building and they kind of know each other 
through various connections. So yeah, you get five perspectives. Um, so Sujin and Miho were in an orphanage together as children and that was in the same town as Ara. So they all knew each other from childhood and now Miho lives with a girl called Curie who works in um, kind of like a gentleman's club, uh, but a very high class one um, because she's really, really beautiful because she's had a lot of facial surgery to make herself beautiful to get this job. And so Sujin really wants this surgery. Also, she wants the opportunity for this job. So there's a lot about um, the beauty industry in South Korea and this idea of like the surgeries that women are getting, which is kind of what made me want to pick up the book because I'm fascinated by that industry and that kind of culture. It's something that I've read briefly in other books, but I wanted, I was really interested to read a whole book about that. There's a lot else going on. So Warner, who is like not really connected to the other women, lives in the apartment building with her husband and she's pregnant and kind of grappling with parenthood, especially around like maternity leave and work and money and terrified that she's gonna miscarry. So there's a lot going on in here. And I would say it's a very readable, very accessible, very fun novel. Like you won't be bored. I really, really enjoyed the experience of reading it. I would say that I thought the issues and the kind of like interesting themes were definitely my favorite bit rather than like the actual characters themselves i didn't particularly kind of connect to the characters maybe there wasn't enough time because there were so many perspectives but i just didn't think any of them felt like completely fleshed out authentic characters but because there were so many of them that didn't really bother me and i was really interested in the themes um especially like i say around the beauty industry i think the book definitely acknowledges the ways that south korea is a very patriarchal society still and the kind of social currency that is put on being beautiful and how that kind of affects a woman's world in the way that she can be ambitious and move up in the world and the parts about one are thinking about maternity leave and the fact that her boss is like well you can't take maternity leave or if you do when you come back there might not be a job for you those parts really reminded me of kim Jong young born 1982 which kind of also looks at women in a south korean society so yeah i wasn't like massively taken by any of the characters i don't think the characters will particularly stay with me but i am really enjoying reading more set in south korea and i think this book had a lot of interesting things to say and was just like a fun read so i would recommend it i gave this 3.5 i gave this month the erby essay collection of four i forgot to say okay let's now talk about the books that i have already spoken about in vlogs so i'll speak a little bit more briefly but i will link the vlogs below in my birthday anti valentine's reading vlog i read a separation by katie kitamura and i really really like this book so the book itself i gave a four but i am so excited to have discovered katie kitamura because although the book wasn't 100 percent perfect i think i found a writer that I absolutely love and I can't wait to read her new book which is coming out this year. So this follows a young woman who has separated from her husband but he's asked her to keep it a secret so no one knows that they you know publicly aren't living together anymore and then his mother calls her and is like I can't get a hold of him where is he and obviously the wife has no idea where he is and the mother says oh I thought you were on holiday in Greece together and she's like, oh no, he went by himself. And she's like, well, I can't get a hold of him. So she travels to Greece to this very luxurious hotel in quite a rural, quite deprived part of Greece. And over the course of the time that she's there um, and trying to look for her husband, we learn more about their relationship. We learn about their separation and it becomes increasingly likely that something bad has happened to him. I don't really want to say anything more about the plot. It is a relatively short book and I think it really relies on the tension that it builds um, and you not really knowing what's going to happen. It is very suspenseful. It has that thing that I love where you just feel like something really dark or really nefarious is going to happen and it's kind of like simmering under the surface the whole time. It's very introspective. We're very much in this character's mind and basically nothing happens um some things do happen but for the most part you are just with this woman in this very kind of isolating kind of alienating environment the only other people around really are the staff at this hotel a couple of guests she doesn't speak the language and there's all these amazing scenes where she'll be watching two of the staff members or some of the locals talking and she doesn't know what they're saying but she's kind of imagining that she does and trying to piece it together and they are all familiar with her husband and they don't know where he's gone and so she starts kind of like theorizing and building these potential relationships that her husband's had with these people and where he might be and i just thought that was so clever so so well done the book is a lot about their relationship you never get his perspective and again i think that's an interesting um kind of take on it she is thinking about their relationship 
and it's all coming from her and she's thinking about their separation and it is a lot about it's about commitment um definitely it's kind of about grief like grieving a relationship how much does a marriage tie you to a person um and even if you're not together anymore the kind of things that you might feel for them or the ways that you feel responsible for that person and um, it's not particularly sentimental book at all it is our main character is kind of cold but she really thinks a lot and reflects a lot on what i think are very very interesting issues around love and relationship i thought that something like even more dark might happen or there might be some like really like gut punch ending because of how well built the tension was i don't think that was the intention of the book and therefore i don't think it's a criticism of the book it's just my personal preference i guess but yeah i did really really enjoy it i think it's a really interesting really well written it is super gripping despite the fact that nothing happens if you don't like introspective plotless slow bone books like i do don't read it because you won't like it and i think because it's blurbed as you know a wife is looking for her missing husband i think a lot of people were very disappointed by this looking at the reviews which i can imagine um if you thought it was going to be like a thriller it's definitely not but i loved it i love katie kitamura's writing and i can't wait to read more from her i read the pisces by melissa broder and this was such a revelation <laughs> um i don't want to talk too much about this because i talk about it in the vlog and i kind of talk about it in um the next video that's going up but i didn't expect to love this and I absolutely did. I gave it a 4.5 and I haven't really stopped thinking about it. This is about a 38 year old woman who is a PhD student, um, but she's very disillusioned. She ends a bad relationship. And so she goes to stay in her sister's beach house in LA for the summer and dog sits. And she is forced to go to group therapy because of her history of getting into toxic relationships and something that happened with her ex. She also starts dating. It's very like LA dating apps. She kind of meets these women who are also in this group with her. And then she meets this man on the beach who turns out to be a merman and they start this love story. So it just sounds totally like surreal, irreverent, weird, um, kind of, I was imagining it would be like snarky and cold, but I actually found this book a lot more sensitive and a lot warmer than I expected. Our main character is a selfish, unlikable person who does terrible things for sure. But I think the book actually looks really sensitively at kind of her mental health, the mental health of some other characters, that feeling of complete disillusionment, disenfranchisement, just sort of ambivalence towards everything. I also thought that what it's saying about love and relationships was just so smart, like the way it uses that kind of magical realism element or fabulism or whatever to play out a conversation around codependency, around what we want from love, like what we are actually asking for, what we are needing from someone when we think we're in love with them or when we want to be in a relationship with them i thought the ending was brilliant so clever and i just thought it was a really readable but reflective and introspective at the same time i really connected with her writing and yeah i just really really loved it which was a surprise in that vlog i also read if i can't have you by charlotte levin which is i'd call it like a psychological thriller about a woman who gets obsessed with this man she's a doctor's receptionist and he's a new doctor in the practice and she's immediately like, I'm in love with you. We are gonna be together. It's very like you, the TV show. She has a lot of like trauma in the past. That I guess you find out throughout the novel. And yeah, she basically starts stalking him and tries to make them in a relationship. This was really fun. I absolutely flew through it. It was very like compelling. Like you want to know what's gonna happen. Definitely there's some good like little twists in here. It's really, you see like the breakdown of a character, which is always something that I love. Like you watch someone descend into kind of madness or desperation um but it's also quite like funny like our main character you know is like low-key psycho but she's really made me laugh like she's very disparaging about the kind of rich um tory doctors at the practice and the racist right-wing people she comes in contact with and she's just like knows she's a bitch and she's just makes really like funny sides about them so i really enjoyed that i think this was a really fun book i ended up giving it a three stars because ultimately like it didn't do anything totally different for me um that a thriller hasn't done before like it you know it's in that vein of like stalkery books but i thought it was a good example of one i really enjoyed it yeah i'd read from this author again 100 percent. okay now the books that i read in my most recent vlog which went up on monday so i'll be brief and these were the books that came in a book subscription box so i'm going to start off by talking about the one book that i dnf'd from that video which was okay mr field by katherine kalalia I never DNF books like I really think I DNF like one book last year um and I wasn't expecting 
this to be the DNF out of all of those books. I thought this sounded amazing. It's like literary fiction about a man who buys this like beautiful house in South Africa in Cape Town that is kind of like an architectural triumph and him and his wife move there. And it said on the back that then like the house starts doing strange things to them and it's a story about obsession. I mean, that sounded great, but for me, this didn't do it. I found oh, so much, but I didn't like anything about this book. Um, Like it's well written, but it's a very like dreamlike fragmented book. There's no clear really until like the last 50 pages sense of like a linear timeline. You're very much thrown into him at the house with his wife and then kind of finding out how they got the house and then oh she's gone. Is she coming back? And he's always in his head and he like ruminates on things but in a way that I just found quite boring. Like he'll just like stare out the window and talk about like a crane for ages and yeah I just couldn't get like a hold. I just needed like an initial foothold on like what is the setup here? If it's about two characters becoming strange in this new house and becoming obsessive i need some concept of what they were like before that and that and this book didn't give me that and so i just found it almost impossible to be invested in the characters disintegrations or the disintegration of their relationship um because what what was it to compare it to and then like at the very end of the book i did like dnf it i like speed read the last 50 pages is when this like obsessive thing comes and our character gets obsessed with another character but it came so late and i was like oh okay so it's come a bit late for me i'm still not really enjoying it but maybe like the ending will be really good no the ending i just maybe i'm not clever enough for this book i didn't understand it didn't work for me not a fan i read zoo by christopher wilson which is like a satire about a young boy in the soviet union who ends up becoming like the companion of stalin um, this was definitely funny. I think it was well executed as a satire and um, made me laugh. It was quite like fun and rompy. Basically, you're following a young boy called Yuri who is kind of strange. He suffered a lot of like weird accidents as a child and now people want to tell him their secrets and so Stalin kind of takes him in as a confidant. He ends up moving to his like official residence and being his, yeah, companion. And so obviously there's a lot of like hijinks involved um strange situations that occur you're getting kind of this insight into what stalin in the last years of his life may have been like and the strange things he was doing and it is very like funny it's very ridiculous it's poking fun at a lot of ideas around communism around the soviet union around this idea of a man who is such like a man who is a dictator and who is the one person and what that would kind of do to a character and especially as he's in entering into his final year so i thought it was fun and enjoyable a lot of people say it's like moving it definitely becomes less like ridiculous and a bit more bleak in the latter part of the book but i think i'm not i just i didn't feel particularly moved um it's a very short book and you know it's so ridiculous at the start that i didn't truly believe in yuri as a character or any of the characters so i wasn't particularly sad about it but i do think it's a very well executed satire just because it didn't make me like feel anything that doesn't take away from that and it made me laugh and it's not like a lot of things i read so i'm pleased that i read it i gave that one and three stars um and then i read i thought i knew you by penny hancock again not something i usually read this is like a very domestic drama um about two best friends and basically they've been best friends since university and one of them has a son who's like 16 one of them has a daughter who's 30 jules's daughter accuses holly's son of raping her and holly basically refuses to believe it despite being like a feminist who was always championed believing the woman and so things happen and we try and find out you know is it true is it not true why isn't it true i think this was readable compelling i wouldn't say oh i'd never read a book like this again because i think like for a change it was i didn't hate the reading experience of it i had problems with the way this book tackled some subjects which i talk about in my vlog so that's why it's two stars if you want to know more then the vlog will be linked below and then finally i read the last place you look by kristen lepionka i don't again want to talk about this too much because i know i'm referencing it in a lot of videos that are coming up soon or have been gone but this is a thriller set in america about a private investigator called roxanne weary who is asked to investigate a case and i wasn't sure what to expect going into this it's just you know sounds like a very trad thriller some of them really work for me some of them really don't i love this i loved roxanne as a character she felt kind of in the mold of safe like PI detectives that I like but kind of a bit fresh. I thought the pacing was perfect, the atmosphere was great, 
the reveal was so smart, so satisfying. Um, and I can't wait to read more from this author. I've already bought the second one. So yeah, absolutely love this. So thankful for that vlog just because it introduced me to was hopefully a new favorite thriller author. Okay, so they are all the books that I read in the second half of February. That's a lie. It's not all the books, but some of them I haven't talked about in a vlog yet. So you'll have to see them in my March wrap up pub one. Please do let me know if you've read any of these books or what the best book that you read in February was. I would love to know. Obviously, I would love if you subscribe my Instagram and my story graph are linked down below and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.